Hello and welcome back to yet another trophy video on the channel. It is Latecom here and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how I managed to farm from 5000 PR to 35000 PR in two weeks. Now, before we get started, I need to fill you guys in on the situation of my account at 5000 power rank when I first returned to the game. I had deleted every single gear and gem that I had, except for some Radiant and Shadow gems used to destroy the max Stellar gems. I had nothing on the account other than those remaining insignificant gems. However, the thing that set my account apart from a completely new player was the fact that I had almost max mastery and all the obtainable dragons as you can't delete what has already been learned, which definitely made the grind from 5000 to 35000 PR much easier than it would for a completely new player. To be more specific, out of the 4944 power rank that I had, 450 was from my class at level 30, 2,234 was from my Trove Mastery, 500 from Geode Mastery, 90 from the subclass level, 50 from my Flask, and 1,600 from my Dragons. So, how did I do it? Thankfully, I still had classes that were over 5,000 power rank, allowing me to skip straight to Crystal Gears without needing to start from lower rarities. I managed to craft a crystal weapon from the crystal forge in the geo top side, which allowed me to start the grind back to 35,000 PR, all the way from rock bottom. Now, the roadmap to 35k PR for me was simple. Start by working towards being able to solo Uber 9 Elemental Worlds and Uber 10 top side, farm a set of stellar lesser gems in their respective Uber worlds, Level the set of lesser gems to 25, then proceed to work on farming dells for a crystal for sets, all while farming club and parrot gem boxes every single day trying to get a good stellar and parrot gems after looting 10 radiant and parrot gems. Once all of that is done, all that's left to do is to farm the weekly bound brilliance and augment the set of gems until they are maxed. But I guess it's definitely easier said than done. So here we are, in the first phase of progression, working towards being able to solo Uber 9 dungeons. Objectively speaking, we'll need 10,000 power rank in order to even be eligible for loot in the world, so the main priority in this phase is to socket any gems with the right stats that are available, regardless of their rarity. Right stats in this case being crit damage and crit hit, with magic damage or physical damage being the variable based on the type of class you are using. The expertise questline would help you progress fairly easily if you haven't already completed it as it grants you a few gems. Sadly, I had already completed the questline ages ago, so I had no free gems to claim. However, the one advantage I had was the fact that my classes were already at level 30, so I didn't have to worry about locked gem slots that you'd otherwise have problems with. Thanks to our good old friend, the Rally Blade, I was able to farm some gem boxes in Uber 8 Elemental Worlds and socketed any gems that had the right stats that my character needed. At this point, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. Complete more dungeons, get your character stronger by socketing gems, improve on your characters as you enter higher ubers by replacing the weaker gems with stronger ones, so on and so forth. After you find yourself strong enough to solo uber 9 after the constant improving on your gears and gems, here comes the second phase. Farming a set of stellar rarity lesser gems. At this stage, what I did was choose a physical damage class as well as a magic damage class to work on concurrently while farming in uber 9 elemental worlds. Ideally, you'd want to be working on a farming class and another being a DPS class. For farming classes, I'd recommend characters such as Neon Ninja, Shadow Hunter, or even the Bard if you actually have him. These classes have low requirements for obtaining their movement speed buff, which is why I would recommend them to anyone looking to quick cycle through dungeons. The reason why you would want to build a magic and physical damage class simultaneously is because you'll be getting arcane gems that have magic damage as a main stat and fierce gems that have physical damage as a main stat. In order to utilize both types of gems obtained as much as possible, picking two classes with different damage types is ideal. For me, I decided to use the bot as my magic damage farming class and Shadowhunter as my physical damage gem dump. 
My plan was to swap all of the gems I got from Bard to the Ice Sage in the later stages of gameplay, as the Ice Sage will become a more versatile class overall in comparison to the Bard later on. Overall, this phase focuses on obtaining Stellar Gems and leveling them to level 25. I would recommend you to level all gems equally, such as getting all of your gems to level 15 before starting to level them up to 20, and same goes from level 20 to 25. This helps you to optimize your gem leveling, as higher levels will require more gem dust on average, especially from levels 23 to 25. An essential tip that you should note is that you should be in a club with the Effigy of Potent Opulence fixture as it reduces gem upgrade costs by 20% and grants a 4 times greater chance to drop Prime World gem boxes with a max level fixture. If you're a PC player, feel free to join our No Requirement Club that has this fixture as well as all the other essential fixtures for newer players maxed. Link to our Discord server will be in the descriptions below. To speed up my progression, I managed to farm enough flux in order to buy a 15-day patron pass costing 850 credits. The way patron helps in this stage is it allows you to get a guaranteed stellar gem from uber 9 elemental boxes in every 35 boxes instead of 70, which really helped me to cut down the time spent farming for stellar gems overall. Additionally, due to me already having all the dragons in the game, I was also able to farm flux at the same time while farming gem boxes by looting stellar gears in the loot collector. It isn't recommended to purchase a 15 day patron pass if you're a newer player, only because you won't be able to capitalize as much on the buffs that a mid or end game player could. Nevertheless, it still is a good way to cut down on the time spent farming stellar gems, which is why it was worth mentioning in the video. On the topic of gems, let me just say that the one thing that will give you the most problems is Empowered Gems. Not only are Stellar Empowered Gems quite uncommon in Empowered Gem boxes, you'll also have to face another wall of RNG when it comes to 2 or 3 star Empowered Gems. What I did in order to so-called farm Empowered Gems at this stage was to farm Adventurine from quests and spend that Adventurine that I farmed on Club Empowered Gem Boxes, which each grants one Radiant Empowered Gem Box. After buying and looting 10 of them, you'll be able to craft a Stellar Empowered Gem Box in the Adventurous Crafting Bench, and which is going to be where you'd pray to get a good gem starting with 3 stars, as 3 stars Empowered Gems are the only ones that will be able to reach 2251 PR when maxed and fully augmented. This is a method that you can utilize if you wish to speed up the process of getting good stellar Empowered Gems, other than just obtaining Empowered Gem Boxes through your Lunar Souls and Effort Points. Moving on, we have what I like to call the Delve Phase of Progression. Around this time, I had around 32,000 Power Rank after getting a max set of level 25 Lesser and Empowered Gems, and this was when I began farming for Crystal 4 Gears in Uber 10 Delves. In order to make my farm more efficient, I joined in on Uber 10 Leviathan Delve runs where these runs would also allow me to farm for a permanent Uber 10 Leviathan Torch on the side. If you want to progress quicker, you should also find the best method that would allow you to farm for multiple things at the same time, and in this case it was exactly that. Every 51 Uber 10 Vaults in the Delves, you'd be guaranteed a Crystal 4 piece where the type is randomized. Thankfully, due to my luck, I was able to farm a permanent torch and my crystal for set within 3 days of farming, but expect it to take anywhere between a few days to a few weeks to obtain both of the set and the permanent torch. This phase is simply just RNG, there's not much that you can do about it. The best way to speed up this part of the progression is by getting a speedy group of farmers to go about the delves together, but otherwise there's pretty much nothing else that could be done. Here's an image of the progression on my Ice Age right after obtaining a Crystal Force set. Around 33k PR, you know, just to give you guys a rough idea of how a character at this stage of progression should be like. If you don't have the permanent torch, another good alternative is just to obtain the weekly Uber 10 torch, although it lacks a decent bit of power rank and stats in comparison to a permanent torch. Of course, after getting the Crystal Force sets, what you'll need to do is to max it. The fastest way to obtain Crystalline Cores is to join a 5-star farm, where you'll be able to clear 5-star dungeons as a large group. You can join the 5-farm chat in-game and wait for someone to host a run. 
It took me a little more than a week to max out my Crystal Force set by joining these farms, but that already pushed me way beyond 35k PR at that point. You'll probably not necessarily need your Crystal Force set to be maxed in order to hit 35k PR, but if you're struggling to hit it, then it might be necessary. While I was farming my cores in the Uber 10 top side, I managed to rack up a large number of gem boxes on the side as well. This is where you could improve on your existing lesser gem PRs at the same time by opening up the gem boxes and leveling the gems to level 15 to gauge the PR of the gem and whether it would be worth to replace the existing max gem if it were to be leveled to 25. In my case, I aim to get my lesser gems to at least 1650 power rank at level 25, which is going to be around 1260 PR at level 15. The higher the PR the gems end up, the lesser bound brilliance you would need to max them, which allows you to save your resources overall. I believe after this stage you'll pretty much be well above 35k power rank provided that you have obtained all the primordial dragons and majority of the regular dragons, including obtaining 500 trove and 100 geode mastery rank. As for me, I'm currently around 36k power rank at this point, where the only thing that's left for me is to augment my gems until they are max PR overall. What I'm currently doing at this stage is making sure that I farm all my daily star bars with my patron pass active in order for me to craft as many builders to pure focus as I can, as I'm always going to be short of bound brilliance when it comes to augmenting the gems. Otherwise, when I'm out of Diamond Dragonite, I end up crafting the precise focus as the next best alternative. This may vary based on your situation and the amount of bound brilliance that you have, but I would generally recommend that you craft as many superior focuses as you can to not waste as much bound brilliance as possible. With all that being said, that will conclude the video. If you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord server and clear your doubts there by asking questions, as I'm fairly active on it most of the time. I hope you've learned a thing or two from this guide and I wish you all the best with your grind towards 35k power rank and beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if this helped and I will see you guys sometime soon. As usual, peace out.